good day and good vibe. And welcome to another episode of Chill Art. Chill Art is a public service program of the Leesburg Center for the Arts. The program's goal is to help people shift focus to the positive. Body mind experts and guest contributors from across the globe volunteer to present their mindfulness modalities and give our viewers tools to better cope during challenging times. Then, after their presentations, we walk you through a short, no artistic ability required art project. Think of them as fun, creative, moving meditations that calm the soul and raise the spirit. My name is Ed Anderson. I am the owner head instructor of Mount Dora Capoeira here in Lake County, Florida. I am very honored that Chill Art has asked me to share the concept of mindfulness as it applies to our art form. I'm looking forward to this journey with you and looking forward to sharing knowledge with you. Capoeira is a Brazilian martial art that began about 500 years ago, uh, some say even longer by the slaves of Brazil as a way to defend themselves and to fight for their freedom. They disguised it with dance moves and performed it to live music so that the slave owners would not know what it was or how they were practicing it openly. Over the years, it has evolved into an art form that is actually practiced all over the world. I'm very honored to be a member of Capoeira Angola Palmadas underneath Grandmaster No, and to help share this art form here with uh, people of Lake County. So Capoeira has three parts to it. Movement, music, philosophy. A Capoeira will gravitate toward, toward one of these three parts. And mindfulness in this is becoming lost in one of these three parts. Becoming aware of the moment of, of what you're in and what you're doing. Forgetting everything else around you, just living in that one moment. And so we're going to show you a little bit of the movement that we do and the music and talk a little bit later about the philosophy. Let's get started. There's a saying in Capoeira, I find my peace in the Jinga. The Jinga is the main movement of Capoeira. It's what draws everything out to keep you focused on the art form itself and where you are at that moment. A jinka starts out feet apart, putting one foot back and arm up, bringing the foot forward and placing the other foot back, moving in a swaying motion. Now mindfulness comes to hear that when you start moving, you get in touch with the here and now, how you move, what your body's doing, being aware of every part of yourself. As the art form continues, you begin to move more with a purpose. It almost becomes a meditation to where you forget where you end and where the jiva begins. Just simply back and From the Jinga, we move into other movements. The Kapalista traditionally practices with a stationary object. But then we start moving from the Jinga to other things, several of the kicks. body as smoothly as I can, moving from one movement to the next. 
making sure your movements reflect, reflect a flow. Some people say, Cap, what is like a song? When you sing it, you want it to be nice and smooth. And that's where mindfulness for us comes into play. Any capoeirista who doesn't play with that mindset usually ends up playing very erratically, very um, with a jerky motion, disrupts the flow of the game. Because capoeira is a conversation between two people of movement. If you're going to speak to someone, you need to speak to them clearly. If you're going to do it with capoeira movements, you have to be you have to be very clear in what you're doing and what you're saying. And mindfulness, being in that moment, being aware of what you were doing, how you were moving, is one of the most critical parts of capoeira. Not being distracted by anything else, not bringing in any negative feelings but to be right there in that moment. And that's what capoeira means for the movement itself. Being in that moment, moving smoothly, not worrying about anything else, connecting everything in your life with one fluid motion. That brings it all together. Music is an essential part of capoeira. You could almost say that Capoeira was born in music itself. This is a bit about It is the primary music instrument of Capoeira and almost exclusively associated with the art form of Capoeira. The bit consists of a piece of bariba wood called a verga, a cabasa, a hollowed out board, a corda or a cord, that stretch from one end to the other, a stick that we call the baqueta, a shaker we call a kashishi, and then a rock we call the pedra. And through these, we perform the musical capoeira on the bitter mouth. Now, with this, we play rhythms or toques that are associated with the game. And each one of these toques tells us what kind of game we're going to play, how fast we're going to play, how slow we're going to play. Is it time to uh, stop the game? Is it time to change what type of game we're going to do? The bitter bout communicates this with us. And again, that's where we come from the concept of mindfulness, because when you're playing capoeira in the hoda, or the, or the circle, you also need to be present in the situation and be aware of what the music is doing while you're playing. If you're not mind, you don't have mindfulness and you're not present, you won't be able to do that. And that's one of the things that capoeira teaches us. So I'm going to play a little, uh, a little uh, capoeira music for you. This is called the Angola Toque. tempo of the game. If you are playing bitter bow for a holda, then you have to be present in the situation, being aware of how fast you're playing, what you're playing, making sure that you keep a steady tempo to that the people playing the game won't get distracted by it or any kind of extraneous uh, glitches that could happen if someone is not being mindful while playing. It's also very important that when you play this instrument that you listen to the other percussion that are playing, the drums and the tambourine instrument uh, called a pandero, that are also playing along with the bitter bow. You must listen to everything, be present in the moment, be mindful of what is going on in the music so that you can be a part of it. Uh, here's another uh, toki that we play. This is called Sampato Grande de Angola.
being present. The bitter bowl also offers other things for Capoeiristas. We have a meditation toki that we call the Ave Maria. Uh, I use this sometimes when I just need to relax. I need to center myself, bring, bring myself in from any distractions of the day, um, any stress I might be feeling. I will sometimes just sit and play this toki just to relax, bring myself together, bring myself to that state of mindfulness where I can start again and face any challenges that come to me. The Ave Maria. Music is just as important to the capoeira martial art form as the movement itself is. It's one of the unique things about capoeira. And I've been blessed that the, this art form has opened so many doors for me and allowed me to experience so many things. And so finally, I'd like to discuss how mindfulness applies to the philosophy of capoeira. Our Grand Mestre No in Brazil has a saying, capoeira na roda, capoeira na vida. Capoeira in the circle, capoeira in life. How you play capoeira in the game should reflect how you exist in life, how mindful you are in life. Our group has three hallmarks, focus, discipline, and respect. Mindfulness and focus is almost one and the same. You have to be aware of where you are at that time, what you were doing, how you were moving. In music, how you're playing is what you are doing flowing with the rest of the music, is how you're moving in the holda, the game, flowing with what the person across from you that you're playing is. Are you having a very clear conversation of movement? Discipline. Discipline and mindfulness also go almost hand in hand. To be disciplined means you need to be mindful of where you are, what you are doing. And finally, respect. People will be a reflection of how you treat them. Being mindful of how you treat people will bring people in to treat you well. This is one of the crucial parts of capoeira and one that we hold very dear to what we do. I wanna thank, again, Chill Art for allowing me this time to talk to you and to share uh, parts of our art form. And if you're interested, please visit www.mountdoracapoeira.com to find out more about our program. We offer uh, children and adult classes. We also offer a free class for uh, children and adults with special needs. And thank you very much. Capoeira na roda, capoeira na vida. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. That was such a marvelous presentation. Really, it was fantastic. And now it's time for the No Artistic Ability Art Tutorial. So in searching for a tutorial idea relating to capoeira, I found a French illustrator and practitioner of capoeira whose watercolor figure sketches just inspired me. So I dug deeper into the internet and I found his website and he has several galleries dedicated to illustrations of capoeira. 
He also has a page in English giving nonprofit organizations permission to use his artwork in the spirit of sharing. That's just that's just beautiful, Alex. Thank you. Well, today we're not using his artwork images directly, but we are going to use some as templates. Now you can go online and search capoeira clip art and find more precise line drawings and silhouettes, but we're going to do something more fluid, more abstract. This art tutorial is not about the way Alex got to his final image. We are going to work backward and use his final image as a template. You'll see what I mean. He starts with a blank piece of paper. Of course, his talent and training in figure and gesture drawing. And we, on the other hand, are keeping it simple, using the inspiration and tracing in pencil first. So, you'll see. It's fun and colorful and it flows. Visit Alex's website. He's got really wonderful illustrations. And do note, he is on Patreon. Okay, so let's get to the table. So we are here we are on my messy table. And this is a black and white print of what you saw just a little while ago in color of a few of Alex's watercolors. So the reason why I have it here is that it's just easy to see the outlines without being uh, distracted by the color. So I was playing around with this. And here are some of the watercolors I did first by tracing around his finished work and it's a wet on wet technique that we're going to do today. I love the abstractness of it. I love the fluidity and um, you can do this too. It's really not hard. So I have traced around a few of them and made what I call templates and you can download these from our web page under episode 29 and the web page is leesbergarts.com backslash chill art. So how do you get these to the paper? It's really simple. If you're using a laptop, you can darken the room and then tape your watercolor paper over the image on your screen and just trace around them. Or you could tape a printed version of the templates up against a window and then put your paper on top and trace around it. Now trace around in pencil, not in pen, lightly in pencil. This is a watercolor pencil, but you can use any other pencil. Just be really light about it. So that is what I did to get the outline onto my paper. So. Here is one image that I did, and I used two colors of watercolor. We're going to work on this one. Now, every single one you do is going to be unique. So here it is with my traced lines. And the next thing I want to do is just put water very carefully inside the image. I don't want to go over the lines. So this is going to be a wet on wet watercolor technique. And what I mean by wet on wet is the paper will first be wet and so will the paint. So I'm just going to fill this in. Up into the lines. Take your time. I'm used to this. But take your time and be accurate. Concentrate. Remember, art is a form of mindfulness and focus. Now, if you want to tint your water a bit, so 
so that you can see where you've painted. That can help you too. This is just a tiny bit tinted, barely noticeable. It won't mess up what you're going to do next. Now, there are different types of paper. I think this one is a cotton. I've done it on different papers, and the best to do it is on cold press um, cotton paper. Um, you can also use the acrylic, or not acrylic, the, um, I didn't forget the word I'm trying to use, <laughs> non-cotton, such as Cranston. Okay, so that's, that's all wet and absorbing in. Here's another image, another example of what I did. I'm just taking two different colors and I'm going to use liquid watercolor, which I've put in these dropper bottles. You do not have to do that. You can simply make up your own watercolors out of... Whoops! There goes the light. And just wet these and drop water and color into your areas here on your palette. And you can use that and you can use a brush. But we're going to use some liquid watercolor. Now, very simple. I just need a little color. And watch this. What I'm doing is putting drops in and letting it do its thing. They're called blooms. Another wonderful mindfulness aspect of this is being patient and letting it do its thing and just noticing what it's doing. Put some here. I'm going to put just a teeny drop here. So it will flow to the edge of where you placed your water. And it will commingle with the other colors. I am going to use my brush just to get it to the edges. Now normally I don't tape small pieces, small papers down. I like to pick it up and help it flow. But I needed to keep this in frame for you. The board is at a slight angle. I don't want to do too much stroking. I want it to freely flow, but I do want to get it to the edges. Give it its time. Here's another one I did. Different brand of liquid watercolor. And I didn't do any blotting on it. What do I mean by blotting? I mean, once I got the color everywhere I needed to get it to, all the way up to the lines, I waited a little while, and then I put a Kleenex or a tissue over it very carefully and let the paper towel or tissue absorb some of the color. This one kind of broke the barrier, but it's okay. I'm hearing my camera doing this interesting clicking. Now, when you play with this concept, of wet on wet within some lines. Just think of the possibilities. You don't have to be doing, 
capoeira gestures and figures. You can use it in many different ways. And we have, I think it was episode seven, we did feathers. It's so simple, it's so easy, it's so meditative. You can do grays if you don't want to do colors. So, put that back, get this out of the way. And try not to hit my camera. So, uh, these are some big Q-tips. I can start pulling some of the extra color away if I wish with this very carefully. But, as I mentioned before, I really like the tissue idea. So that's getting seeped into the paper really nicely. Let's see if I can find an example. These I did blot. As you can see, these are many more colors. This had three colors. I had used a brown, a red, and a magenta. And this, a teal and a green. So, are you ready? It's scary. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. Just let it drop. I don't want to take up too much paint. I just gently do this. Play with it. Again, the templates are on leesburgarts.com backslash chill art episode 29 and that's going to look even better when it's dry so I'm going to pull this one up And I think we have time to do another one. And as I say, it will dry up a little bit different than what it looks like when it's wet. So that's it. Check out the webpage, leesburgarts.com backslash chillart. And send me your images at lcfa.buzz at gmail.com. That's lcfa.buzz at gmail.com. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, Ed. That was just a great presentation about mindfulness and capoeira. And you can bring mindfulness into so many parts of your life, not just martial arts and not just art. But in any given moment, if you're feeling anxious, just take a little while, just take a, a stop break, take some deep breaths in, and find something to concentrate on in your environment. <laughs>